So children, a very uh, simple topic we are going to start with. If you just keep certain properties which I teach you in your mind, you can solve any given sum challenge. So easy this chapter is. Okay. And there is no need of doing any prove that sums uh, from this uh, chapter because you know, nobody is going to ask you to prove that sums because there are a lot of good numerical sums in this chapter. So if you really expect prove that sums to come in the exam, you can expect it from midpoint theorem, converse of midpoint theorem. Okay. Otherwise, uh, uh, area theorem. If it is done in school, they may ask you prove that sums in area theorem also. Otherwise, you know, for most of the chapters, your teacher will uh, be keen towards uh, asking numerical sums. Okay. So let's start with chapter number 12, which is isosceles triangle. Children, uh, Advait, are you there? Isosceles triangle. Okay. Okay, Advait. Now, from a very uh, young age, you have been hearing about isosceles triangle, isn't it? Right in class seven or class eight, you had learned what is an isosceles triangle. Okay, you must have not learned all the properties of an isosceles triangle, but you must have got a chance to hear the name isosceles triangle. And you all must be remembering the basic property of an isosceles triangle. What is the most basic property of an isosceles triangle? That the given two sides or any two sides of an isosceles triangle happens to be the same. What is it? Any two sides of an isosceles triangle happens to be equal or same. So in this particular triangle ABC, I have taken AB and AC to be what? Equal sides. So say for example, I'm assuming AB as A, then BC is also equal to what? A. All right. If I'm assuming AB is equal to A units, then AC will also be automatically equal to A units. Now, listen, children. Let me assume BC as the base of the isosceles triangle. Okay. Let us assume BC as the base of the isosceles triangle. Now, always remember if the given triangle is an isosceles triangle, then the angles opposite, children, the angles opposite to the equal sides are also equal. Okay, usually we say that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, and that is the most common way of framing the sentence. The base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. But children, technically speaking, if you say the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, not in every other situation it can hold true. Okay, not in every other situation it can hold true. So the best way of expressing this concept is the angles which are opposite to the two equal sides. In this triangle, which are the two equal sides? A, B and A, C. So if I ask you what is the angle opposite to A, B? It is angle C, isn't it? What is the angle opposite to A, C? It is angle B. So remember, the angles which are opposite to the two equal sides are also equal. That means if this angle is considered as x degree, then this angle will also be considered as was, check considered as what? x degree. <laughs> okay, this is the concept behind isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, any two sides are equal and also the angles opposite to the given two equal sides are also equal. Okay. So children, kindly make a note of this. In an isosceles triangle, any two sides, kindly make a note of this. In an isosceles triangle, any two sides are equal. Any two sides are equal. And also the angles opposite. The angles opposite to the equal sides, the angles opposite to the two equal sides are also equal. Okay. The first point is what? Any two sides are equal. And the second point is angles opposite to these two equal sides are also 
equal. This is the most basic property of an ISO restaurant. Dane Joshua, welcome. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. And the point of like, please join on time, man. Otherwise, you will lose out on the important points which are discussed. Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Fine. Yeah. So the first two points are covered. Now let us discuss about the second important point. Sorry, not second, the third important point. All right. Suppose I have an isosceles triangle like this. Suppose I have an isosceles triangle like this, ABC, okay? Where side AB and side AC are equal. So let me assume AB is equal to A and AC is also equal to A. Okay. I'm taking two iso, sorry, I'm taking one isosceles triangle with two of its sides equal. AB and AC equal. Now, children, the third property is if you draw a perpendicular line, I repeat, if you draw a perpendicular line from the vertex containing the two equal sides. Okay, I'm using a phrase over here, vertex, the vertex containing equal sides. So from the figure, can you tell me which is the vertex containing the two equal sides? I think it should be vertex A. Do you agree with this? Huh? The vertex containing the two equal sides, which are the two equal sides? It is AB, it is AB, and AC, isn't it? These are the two equal sides in this isosceles triangle. So which is that vertex containing both the two equal sides? It is vertex A. Because see, AB and AC, isn't it? Both the equal sides are coming and joining at which common point? At common point A. So this A is known as the vertex containing the equal side. Fine. Now, the property is, if I draw a perpendicular, children, if I draw a perpendicular from this vertex containing the two equal sides to the opposite side BC, to the opposite side BC, imagine, imagine this perpendicular which you have drawn, it is touching the side BC at point D, okay? Imagine that this perpendicular which you have drawn from point A, is touching the opposite side BC at point D. According to the property of isosceles triangle, this perpendicular which you have drawn, which is AD in this case, will bisect the opposite side BC. What did I say, children? It will bisect the opposite side BC. Now, what is the meaning of bisecting? It will divide the opposite side BC into two equal parts. What is the meaning of bisecting, children? It will divide. Yeah, it will divide the opposite side BC into two equal parts. So say, for example, if BC, the whole of BC is equal to 10 centimeter, okay? Say, for example, BC is equal to 10 centimeter and you're drawing this perpendicular AD. Then that AD will be dividing this whole of BC into what? Two equal parts. 5 centimeter, 5 centimeter. This is the meaning of the sentence. Okay. So I'm going to write down the point here. The point is the perpendicular. Please make a note of this. The perpendicular drawn from the point, perpendicular drawn from the point containing point containing equal sides equal sides will bisect will bisect the opposite side you just need to keep an idea children because in the exam nobody is going to ask you this isn't it? They are not going to ask you and fill in the blanks or match the following. Isn't it? You just need to keep an idea about this. What is it? The perpendicular which you draw from the vertex containing the equal sides, it will bisect the opposite side. Okay. 
So imagine children, I'm going to draw another triangle for your reference. Imagine this is your isosceles triangle, okay? This is your isosceles triangle ABC, ABC. Now I'm telling you, now I'm telling you, in this isosceles triangle, side AB and AC are equal. These are the two equal sides. Huh? In the previous example, did you notice? These two sides were equal, these two sides. Hmm? In this example, I have taken these two sides as equal, AB and AC. Now imagine from this vertex, which contains the two equal sides, which are the two equal sides? AB and AC. So which is the vertex containing the two equal sides? Vertex A. Isn't it? So from this vertex containing the equal sides, if I draw a perpendicular, which touches the opposite side of BC at point D, okay? Imagine this perpendicular which you have drawn touches the opposite side BD at point D. Then this whole of BC will be divided into two equal parts. All right. So if the whole of BD is equal to 12 centimeter, then, sorry, the whole of BC is equal to, the whole of BC is equal to 12 centimeter. It implies the length of BD is equal to the length of BC is equal to 12 by 2, and that is equal to how much? 6 centimeters. Understood? BD is equal to DC is equal to what? 12 by 2, which is 6 centimeters. Make sense, Nana, Terence? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, Joshua, Adveed. So this property is also done. Now, let me discuss with you one of the properties of triangles which we have learned in class 8. Okay, you all know this property. The property name is angle sum property of a triangle. Okay, angle sum property of a triangle. I hope you all are familiar with this property. No? What is angle sum property of a triangle? It's a matter of shame to ask you these questions because you all know this. Right from class seven, you have been learning it. Right? Yeah. So angle sum property of a triangle is what? The sum of all the three angles in a triangle will be equal to 180 degrees. Very good, Adhya. Now the sum of all the three angles in a triangle would be what? 180 degrees. That means you have a triangle. No matter whatever kind of triangle it is, children, I repeat, no matter whatever type of triangle it is, be it an isosceles, scalene, equilateral, right angle triangle, obtuse angle triangle, no matter whatever kind of triangle it is. Huh? If you take the sum of all the three angles, I repeat, if you take the sum of all the three angles of this triangle, the sum will always be equal to how much? 180 degrees. Okay it will be equal to 180 degrees. Make a note of this. I know it's a very simple thing for all of you as you have learned this in 7th and 8th, but still you mention it, children. Okay, in the introductory page of this chapter, every other point should be noted down. Parents, keep the camera on. Joshua, Aaron, keep the camera on. Noted? The next two properties, children. All these properties are going to help you a lot in solving numericals. Okay, the next property is exterior angle property of a triangle. Exterior angle property of a triangle. Now, what is exterior angle property? Children, this is very important for this chapter. More than Angle sum property of a triangle, exterior angle property of a triangle is going to help you. Okay. Now, what is exterior angle? Imagine, children, I draw a triangle like this. Okay. No matter whatever triangle it is, as I said, it can be any type of triangle. For any kind of triangle, you can use this property. Imagine you have a triangle ABC. Hmm? Now, I am telling you from this vertex C. Okay. From this vertex C, I am 
extending this line further towards the right hand side. What am I doing here? From that point you see or vertex you see, I am extending that line towards the right hand side. Okay. Uh, imagine I have a point D over here. Okay. Just for the namesake, I am just plotting a point D on that red colored line. Hmm? Imagine that there is an angle created over here. Uh, even if you don't imagine, the angle will be created, children. Okay. Even if you don't imagine, the angle will be created. The moment I extend the line segment BC further to point D, an angle will be created. Can I say that this angle ACD, which I have created right now, it is an exterior angle. Can I say this? Children, you need to understand what is the difference between interior angle and an exterior angle. See, first of all, I will teach you that. Okay, I'll teach you that. Imagine you have a triangle ABC. Now, what is the meaning of interior angles? All those angles which you find inside the triangle are known as interior angles. So, say for example, angle BAC or angle ABC or angle ACB. All these angles are found inside the triangle. Hence, I can say this, all the three angles are what? Interior angles. Okay. Be it angle BAC or angle ABC or angle ACB. All the three angles are what? Interior angles. Make sense? Now, in that case, what would be an exterior angle? Let's understand it. Imagine, children, from this point, you see, I am extending the line further. Okay to point D. So you will notice that once I extended that line segment BC further to point D, outside the triangle, an angle was created. I repeat, outside the triangle, an angle was created. At this point C, children, at this point C. Okay, the green colored angle which I have highlighted, this will be called as exterior angle because this particular angle which is generated at vertex C is not inside the triangle. I repeat, this angle ACD, children, this angle ACD which I have generated, it is not found inside the triangle. It is found outside the triangle. So since it is found in the exterior region of the triangle, you call it as what? Exterior angle. It is known as what? Exterior angle. Okay, so the concept of exterior angle is clear. So now what I'll do is, I'll just erase this portion and go back to the original diagram. What I was supposed to teach? Exterior angle property of a triangle. So children, please pay attention here. Imagine, achha, what is angle ACD? What is angle ACD? It is the exterior angle created at vertex C of triangle ABC. Isn't it? If somebody asks you to describe it or express it, how will you express it? Angle ACD is the exterior angle created at vertex C of triangle ABC. Okay. Now I'm going to teach you what is exterior angle property. Hmm? There is some exterior angle property. Let's learn it. Imagine children, I am assuming angle B is equal to X degree and angle A is equal to Y degree. Okay, I'm assuming angle B is equal to X and angle A is equal to what? Y. According to the exterior angle property, the exterior angle, the exterior angle ACD would be equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. What is the exterior angle ACD? It is equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles. So with reference to this angle, children, the reference, sorry, with reference to that exterior angle ACD, which are the two opposite interior angles? One is angle A, which is Y degree. The other one is angle B, which is X degree. So if you take the sum of both X and Y, that would be equal to what? The exterior angle ACD. Okay, so children, you, just got to know the theory part. Now what I'll do is, I will show it with an illustration. So imagine I have a triangle ABC over here. 
Okay, I am having a triangle ABC over here. At this vertex C of triangle ABC, I have extended the line segment. So it is reaching where? To point D. Imagine this angle A is equal to 31 degree and angle B is equal to 42 degrees. Can you tell me how much would be the exterior angle at vertex C? How much would be the exterior angle A? ED. How much it is? 73. 73 degrees, isn't it? Terence, Nana, clear? Dane, Joshua, Adve? Huh? The exterior yeah. angle ACD will be what? The sum of the two opposite interior angles. So which are the two opposite interior angles? 42 and 31. So that would be equal to how much? 73 degrees. Okay. So you will have to apply these properties while following. Okay. Now, children, let me teach you three more properties, but not based on triangles. Okay, don't get scared. Don't get scared thinking that, you know, I'm going to teach you more properties on isosceles triangle. No, children. I am going to teach you such relevant properties which will help you to solve sums in this exercise. Okay, sums in this exercise. So, it's very important to learn the properties of parallel lines. Okay? In a few sums of exercise, you will be asked to solve, sorry, in a few sums given to you in the exercise, the application of properties of parallel lines will be there. For that purpose, we are just revising it. It shouldn't be like, you know, we came across a sum and then we don't know what the properties of parallel lines are and then we are stuck over there. Hmm? So better, in the very first introductory section of this class, we can learn all the necessary properties. And then once we come across the sums, we will directly implement it. All right. So the first property, children. The first property which you need to learn is when it comes to two parallel lines is alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Okay, now listen. Imagine I have two parallel lines like this. Okay, imagine I have two parallel lines like this. You all know what are parallel lines, isn't it? Parallel lines are those lines which will never touch each other. No matter even if the world comes to end, if the lines are parallel, they will never touch each other. Okay, so those two lines are known as parallel lines. Now, the first property, which is alternate interior angle property, what is it? Imagine, children, I draw a transversal across the two parallel lines. Okay, children, have you heard the word transversal? Have you heard it? Transversal. Heard, no? Very good. Transversal means... It is just a line which is drawn across the given two parallel lines. Okay. Transversal is a line which is drawn across the given two parallel lines. Nothing else. Okay. So what are these two black lines? They are two parallel lines. And what is that green colored line which I have drawn? That is the transversal. Now children, according to the alternate interior angle property, if this angle is equal to x degree, then its alternate interior angle, which is over here, will also be what? x degrees. This is known as alternate interior angle property between two parallel lines. Alternate interior angles. Okay. Do I need to explain it more? Because in class 8 and 7, you have done enough and more. Huh? I'm just revising children. If you are in class 7, I would have also taught you the meaning of interior angles and then alternate interior angles. But that is not necessary here since you're being in class 9. Okay. So this is the first property, alternate interior angles. The second property is corresponding angles. The second property is corresponding angles. Now, what do you mean by corresponding angles? Imagine, children, again, I'm going to draw two parallel lines for your reference. Okay? And 
then I'm going to draw the transversal here. Okay, this green colored line is the transversal. Now, just imagine that this angle is equal to x degree. Then, according to the corresponding angle property, this particular angle will also be what? x degree. Okay, in class 8, you have learned this. Dane, Joshua, you all remember. Terence, Aaron. Huh? I'm not getting into the technicalities of, you know, corresponding angles or alternate interior angles because, you know, it's all gone. The level has gone to learn all those terms. And now you should be just be able to look and predict whether it is alternate interior angle or corresponding angle. Hmm? So this is known as corresponding angles. The third point, children, the third point. It is the co-interior angles. Co-interior angles. Co-interior angles. So to make you understand what is co-interior angles, again, we'll be drawing a pair of parallel lines. First line, and this is the second line. Okay, These are the two parallel lines. Now, children, imagine this is the transversal. Okay, The green colored line is what? The transversal. Now, what is the co-interior angle property of two parallel lines? Very simple it is, children. See this. Imagine I take this angle, which is x degree, and this angle, which is y degree. Okay. Imagine I take the two co-interior angles. Hmm? Imagine I take the two co-interior angles. According to the co-interior angle property, the sum of the two co-interior angles should always be equal to 180. Kindly make a note of this. You all know what are co-interior angles, isn't it? Hmm? Co-interior angles are those interior angles which are found on the same side of the transversal. See this X and Y. They are interior angles because it is found in between the two parallel lines, isn't it? And they are lying on the same side of the transversal. Now the figure which I have drawn, X and Y, they both are lying on the right-hand side of the transversal. So they are known as what? Co-interior angles. Now, what is co-interior angle property? The sum of the two co-interior angles is always equal to 180 degree. Children, you know what is the other term used for this? Supplementary. Okay. Supplementary. So you can also say that the co-interior angles between two parallel lines are always supplementary. Okay. They are supplementary. So you learned all the three important properties of parallel lines. Then you learned exterior angle property, angle sum property, and then we learned the basic properties of isosceles triangle even. Right. So whatever is needed for solving sums, we have learned it. Now directly, let's start with the first question. Very interesting sums, children. It will, you know, trigger you to think. So very interesting it is. Okay, I will give you two minutes time. Huh? Give it a try. Now read the question. Huh? In the figure given alongside, AB is equal to AC. All right. AB is equal to AC. That means for a given triangle, they are telling you two of its sides are equal. Isn't it? So I'll do one thing, children. I will draw the triangle ABC first. Hmm? Since you are in the learning stages, I am drawing all the figures one by one separately. Even if the given original diagram is a mixture of two or three triangles, I'll be dividing it into multiple parts. Okay, so that you understand everything. So what they have said here, AB is equal to AC. AB is equal to AC. When they say AB is equal to AC, children, don't you feel the angle opposite? The angle is opposite. So these two equal sides are also equal. Uh, just keep that in mind, okay? The angles opposite to the equal sides are also equal. Just keep that in mind. Now, this angle is 18 degree. This angle is 48 degree. This is the data given to us. They are asking us to show BC is equal to CD. Okay, they are asking us to show BC is equal to what? CD. 
So let me draw the triangle which contains BC and CD. This is your triangle BCD. Hmm? They are asking us to show side BC and DC are equal. Children, if you are asked to show that BC and CD are equal, you have a very easy technique in your hand. You know what is that technique? You just need to show that the angles opposite to those two sides, BC and CD are equal, isn't it? Children, I told you, no, if in an isosceles triangle, if these two sides are equal, then its opposite angles are also equal. And the reciprocal is also applicable. If two of its angles are equal, then the sides opposite to those two equal angles are also equal. Are you getting it? Huh? If two angles are equal, then the sides lying opposite to those two equal angles are also equal. Just keep this in mind. Hmm? Now, children, they are asking us to show whether CD and BC will be equal. I can show that if I am able to show that angle D and angle B, they both are equal. So let's start our journey. Children, let me ask you a question here. Uh, you know that this angle is 48 and this angle is 18. Multiple ways you can solve each some children. That is a speciality of this chapter in multiple ways. So if I teach you in one method, you may be able to solve it in a different method. Okay, you just keep in mind whether you are applying the correct properties. Okay, vaguely you cannot prove anything or vaguely you cannot solve a sum. Whatever you do, it should be going in synchronization with the properties which we have learned. Otherwise, your teacher will not give you marks. Okay, so here, if I have to solve the sum in the exam, this is my, this is what my approach would be. Children, see this? This is my triangle ABC. This is my triangle ABC. And then I have side DC, isn't it? This is my side DC. If I tell you this angle is 48, this angle is equal to 18 degree, how much would be, how much would be my exterior angle at vertex D? Children, I'll make it more clear to you. I'll make it more clear to you. What if I erase this? Now, what if I erase it, this portion? What if I erase this? A, D, B, okay? A, D, B, and this is what your vertex E. Now, can you see an exterior angle formed at vertex D, online students? Yes. Amrita, is it clear? Huh? You all can see an exterior angle created at vertex D. And just now I taught you, what is exterior angle property? Exterior angle is equal to what? The sum of the two opposite interior angles. So to this exterior angle D, children, to this exterior angle D, which are the two opposite interior angles, angle A and angle C. So how much would be this angle, angle D? It would be the sum of 48 and 18, which is equal to how much? 50, 58 and 60, 60 degrees. You all agree with this? So I can yes. label this angle as what? 66 degrees. I can label this angle as what? 66 degrees. Now, pay attention, huh? pay attention. You know that this whole angle, sorry, this triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. How much is the angle formed at vertex A? It is 48 degrees. And they had also mentioned, children, they had also mentioned that side AB and side AC are equal. Did you notice here? Side AB and side AC are equal. So it's quite obvious the angles opposite to, the angles opposite to, hmm, those two equal sides are also equal. So children, if this angle B is equal to X, this angle C should also be equal to X. Make sense? Huh? Now, in that case, children, in that case, can I say that the sum of 48 
x and x should be equal to 180 degrees. I can say that, right? The sum of 48 x and x should be equal to how much? 180 degree. And which property did I teach you? In such a scenario, the angle sum property, isn't it? I taught you the angle sum property of a triangle. What is the angle sum property? The sum of all the three angles in a triangle is always equal to 180. So children here, 48 x plus x is what? 2x is equal to 180 degrees. I'll do the calculation here, the rest. So 2x is equal to what? 180 minus 48. So 2x is equal to what? 180 minus 48, which is 132 degrees. So this implies x is equal to 132 divided by 2. And that is equal to 66 degrees. Children, I repeat, angle B is equal to what? 66 degrees. They were asking us to prove what? They were asking us to prove BC is equal to CD. Now let's see whether BC is equal to CD. Children, this was the triangle. This was the triangle BCD, right? This is your B, this is your C, and this is your D. Just now, what did we prove in this triangle? Children, in this triangle, angle D is equal to 66 degrees. Hmm? Angle D is equal to 66 degrees. Then what did we prove over here? Angle B is equal to what? 66 degrees. In a given triangle, if two of its base angles are equal, can we say that the given triangle is an isosceles triangle? Yes, we can say that. One more important point, children. If angle B and angle D are equal, don't you feel the sides opposite to those two equal angles are also equal? Yes, we can say that. So can't we say CD is equal to CB? Huh? And this is what they wanted us to show. CB is equal to CD, hence proved. Online students, you all understood it? Now I'll be teaching you how to write the statement and the reasons. Okay, now I'll be teaching you. Children, in the exam, you are not going to draw all these figures like this and then solve because your examiner will not understand what you have written. Right. So this is just to give you a visual presentation. What is happening in which all triangles? Okay, if that presentation is clear, now I can start writing the solution. Okay, pay attention. So this was the question. Now children, from where to start? Online students, did you all follow it? Nana, Dane? Yes, sir. Yes. Everyone understood Joshua, Aaron, Terence? Yes, sir. Okay. Nana, where is Nana? She left. Joshua, Neoda? Yes, sir. How we will start writing the answer. Very simple, children. First of all, you mentioned the triangle which you have used. The first triangle which you had used, triangle ADC. Okay, this triangle, children. This triangle, okay, this triangle. Let us use that triangle to find out what is exterior angle D or exterior angle CDB. Exterior angle CDB is equal to how much it was? It was 48 plus 18 degrees. You have to write these steps, otherwise, you will not get step markings. So, uh, exterior angle CDB would be 48 plus 18, and that is equal to 64 degrees. Okay. In the brackets, you have to mention the name of the property. What is the name of the property? Exterior angle property. Kindly make a note of this because after every statement, children, you have to mention its corresponding property also. Otherwise, the examiner will not understand how you got these results. So every time you write a result like this, exterior angle CDB is 64, just write the corresponding property also. Yes? Oh, 66, no? Okay, fine. I wrote 64. Okay. Sorry, children. 
66 degrees. So then I will note it down 66. Then the next question is, sorry, the next point is from triangle ABC. From triangle ABC, the big triangle. Okay. Uh, let angle B is equal to angle C is equal to X. Just denote it, children. Just present it. Let angle B is equal to angle C is equal to X. Okay. And then you can write it in short. You know angle A plus angle B plus angle C would be equal to 180 degree. Just know why? <clears throat> Explain it to you. Angle sum property of a triangle, the sum of all the three angles, A, B, and C will be 180. How much is angle A? It was given to you 48 degrees. So here I will write 48 plus 48 degrees plus. How much is angle B? I have assumed it to be X. How much is angle C? Again, it is X, which is equal to 180 degrees. So 48 degree plus X plus X is what? 2x that is equal to 180 degrees. Now 2x is equal to 180 minus 48. Therefore, 2x is equal to 132 degrees. How much would be x? X would be 132 divided by 2, which is equal to 66 degrees. Isn't it? 66 degrees. So children. Uh, please do mention which property of triangle you have used. Which property you have used? Angle sum property. Okay. Just do mention this angle sum property. So according to angle sum property, that angle is also equal to 66 degrees. Is it right? This angle is equal to 66 degrees, and this angle is also equal to how much? 66 degrees. Now, what you will do? You will write the final statement. So, from which triangle, children? Which triangle you are going to use in the final statement? Triangle BDC, isn't it? You are going to use triangle BDC. This is your triangle BDC. So, from triangle BDC, you can say angle. B is equal to angle D is equal to 66. Angle B is equal to angle D is equal to 66. Hmm? So this implies the sides which are opposite to B and D. So what is the side opposite to B? DC. What is the side opposite to D? It is BC. So can't we say BC is equal to CD? Yes. BC is equal to CD. Why, children? Because Sides opposite to equal angles. Sides opposite to equal angles are equal. Please make a note of this. This is how you have to present yourself in the exam. Okay. Let's do one more. Did everyone follow? Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is the whole solution, children. So it is not very long also. Okay. Naina, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Let's do the next sum. Question number two. The question is right there on the screen. Just observe the figure. Observe it. I will help you to solve.
you have to find three different angles one is adc one is abc and the other one is angle bac sir, sir is a 65 d 65 and c 50 uh wait c is correct i think mm, i'll solve it i'll solve it okay sir so then they have told you that side ad side ad is equal to side bd see this they have labeled two lines over here what is the meaning of it these two lines that those two sides ad and bd are equal and even children again one more line is given on dc huh? all the three are what single lines if you notice children all the three lines which they have used are single lines that means wherever on whichever side they are using those single lines all the three sides are equal in length that is the meaning okay so children in this case imagine if ad is equal to 4 cm then bd is also 4 cm and dc is also 4 cm this is the meaning which they want to convey okay it's not exactly 4 cm i am not aware of it just to make you understand okay now children they have given you this angle they have given you this angle 130 degrees One hundred and thirty degrees, and they are asking you to find angle ADC. All right, they are asking us to find what is angle ADC. <coughs> now listen, children. Now, can you tell me? Yeah. If this angle is equal to 130 degree, how much would be this angle? The linear pair. Children, you all know if it is a straight line and I have a line segment like this. Now, if this angle is equal to 130 degrees, then how much would be the linear pair or the adjacent angle to 130? It should be 180 minus 130, which is equal to how much? 50 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, very good, children. Huh? You know, on a straight line, children, if you want to learn it, just listen to me. If you have a straight line and I have taken a point A over here and I'm drawing a line like this, okay? I'm drawing a line like this. Imagine I'm telling you this angle is equal to 35 degrees. Then can you tell me how much would be the adjacent angle or the linear pair? It would be 180 degrees minus that 35 degrees. And that is equal to how much? 145 degrees. This angle will be how much? 145 degrees. You know what is the reason behind it? Because on a straight line, huh, you take any point. At that point, the angle will always be equal to how much? 180 degrees. Okay, I repeat, the angle formed at a straight line is always 180 degrees. That is why I am asking you how much would be this angle. Uh, the alternate pair would be 180 minus 130, which is equal to 50 degrees. Make sense? Hello, children. Make sense? Okay. Yes, sir. So I found the first angle ADC. I got it as 80. Uh, what is it? I found the first angle ADC is 80. ADC, 80. Let's try. I think the answer is correct. Children, if you notice, if you notice, this triangle ADC, remember children, I'm not teaching you to write the statements in the exam as of now. I'm teaching you the concept behind it, okay? This angle was 130, hence we got this angle as 50 degree. Now you know that these two sides are equal, right? They have given you, this is A, this is D, and this is C. Uh, AD and DC are equal. So when two sides are equal, you know very well that it's opposite sides are, opposite angles are also equal. So if this angle is equal to 50 degree, 
Can't I say this angle will also be equal to 50 degrees? I can say that. See this, children? AD and DC are equal. That means the angles opposite to those two sides must be equal. See, children, how much is this angle? It is 50 degree. So how much would be this angle? This angle would also be equal to 50 degree. Make sense? Now, they were asking us to find what angle ADC. Isn't it? They were asking us to find what angle ADC. How will you find angle ADC? Very simple. In this triangle ADC, children, in this triangle ADC, you know that angle C is equal to 50. Angle A is equal to 50. Then how much would be the third angle? How much would be the third angle? Let me assume it as X. You know in a triangle, the sum of all the three angles is equal to 180 degrees. So X plus 50 plus 50 is what? 100, which is equal to 180. X is equal to 180 minus 100. And that is equal to 80 degrees. How many of you got this answer? 80 degrees? I got it. Got it? Very good. Nana got it? Joshua, Adve? Yes, sir. Very good. Oh, so X is equal to 180 degrees. This angle. Okay. I will erase all the remaining figures. Okay. Now, the second question is what? To find the value of the value of ABC. Where is angle ABC? Over here. Okay. Angle ABC. Let's do it. Now, how will you find angle ABC? Children, listen to this part. Mm -hmm. Let me draw this figure once again. If you're feeling bored, just let me know, children. I'll give you a short break, okay? This is equal to 80 degrees. Now, they are asking us to find what angle ABC. Uh, angle ABC is this angle, no, children? The portion which I'm highlighting in red color. This will be the angle ABC, right? This is what they are asking us to find. Okay, now let me ask you one thing. Children, whether you find angle ABC, this is just a question thrown at you, huh? Whether you find angle ABC or you find angle ABD, does that make any difference? Whether you find angle ABC or you find angle ABD, does that make any difference? I think both the answers are the same, isn't it? Huh? You find angle ABC. Or you find angle huh? whether you find angle ABC or you find angle ABD, that does not make any difference. Now, whatever I said right now has got a lot of significance in further solving the sum, children. Don't consider it to be a very lame statement, okay? It's very important in solving the sum. Whether you find angle ABC or ABD is the same thing. Now, there must be some reason that I have used this statement. The reason is, children, rather than taking this big triangle ABC, rather than taking this big triangle ABC, can't I take the small triangle ABD in order to find this angle ABD? Isn't it? I can. So that was the purpose behind telling you Instead of finding ABC, try to find ABD. It will give you the same answer, nothing else. Okay, so for your reference, I am going to draw this triangle ABD here. Okay, triangle ABD. This is A, this is B, and this is D. Now children, you know that BD and AD are equal. See this, AD and BD, they are equal. Now, we did not do anything. They had only given us that AD and BD are equal. So if AD and BD are equal, what type of a triangle is ABD? 
it is an isosceles triangle any two sides are equal that means the triangle is an isosceles triangle isn't it so since ad and bd are equal i can say it is an isosceles triangle now children if you notice we have already found this angle adc how much it was 80 degrees in the previous part of the question we have already found what is angle adc it is 80 degrees so let me ask you a question here children hmm? listen to this if this angle is equal to 80 degrees then how much would be how much would be the linear path joshua can you answer this good good yeah how how much would be the linear pair how much would be the linear pair it would be the whole of 180 degree minus 80 degrees isn't it the whole of 180 minus 80 which is equal to 100 degrees so i can say this angle adb is equal to 100 degrees makes sense now everyone has to look here children ad and bd are equal sides so the angles opposite to the equal sides are also equal can't i say that this angle is y and this angle is also y can't i say this i can say this isn't it now children if you consider this triangle abd if you consider this triangle abd you have already got the value of angle d how much it was just now you found 100 degrees huh? this angle is considered to be y this angle is considered to be what y so children can't i say the sum of the sum of the three angles of this triangle is equal to 180 degrees yes we can say that now 100 plus y plus y is what 2y which is equal to 180 degrees so 2y is equal to 180 minus 100 therefore 2y is equal to 80 degrees y will be equal to how much 80 degrees divided by 2 and that is equal to understood so children i was able to find this angle abd okay rather than finding angle abc i just found angle abd but i am getting the same answer which i would have got if i had tried to find abc okay so that part is also clear online students everyone clear yes sir okay kindly note it down children whatever figures i draw hmm? and whatever statements i make you just note it down because you know eventually all these steps are only going to help you during revisions because you know if you just note down the appropriate solution huh the one which i teach you to present in the paper if you refer to that during revision time nothing will be going into your head okay nothing will go into your head because the explanatory part is not there only those statement and reasons which are required in the examination are there so if you note it down now uh, the first part of my explanation where i separate the diagrams into smaller diagrams and by using those smaller diagrams i go on solving each and every question so along with the diagram if you write down the statements things will be very easy for you during revisions so but okay. instead of these many steps we could have directly done 2y is equal to 80 and y is equal to 40 because 80 is the exterior angle Yeah, Animesh, I'm just explaining the sum now, so I'm going through all the steps. Later okay, on, we will think about the shortcut techniques. Now we are learning the method. Okay, in the exam you can apply all the shortcut techniques, but right now we are just started learning the chapter, so let's go through every other step. Okay. What is the next question, children? Angle BAC. Okay, children, you want me to write the actual steps which you need to do in the exam, or will you be able to write it on your own? Dean, Animesh, Terence, Aaron, Nena, you all will be able to write down the steps. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let's not waste time. Let's let's solve the last part. 
which is angle BAC. Where is angle BAC? Achha, this whole angle you have to find. Angle BAC. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very easy, children, angle BAC. So I'll do one thing. I will copy paste this original diagram over here. Okay. This is the original diagram. Now they are asking us to find what? This whole angle BAC. Okay, this whole angle BAC. Now let me ask you, how much is this angle just now you found? 40 degrees? Now you know BD and AD, they both are equal sides. So the angles opposite to the equal sides are what? Always equal. So if this is 40 degree, this angle is also 40 degrees, right? Then children, Earlier, we had found this angle. Uh -huh. <clears throat> this angle we had found. No, this angle is equal to how much? 80 degrees. So, children, uh, let me draw that part once again. Triangle ADC. Triangle ADC. Okay. Triangle ADC, where AD and DC are equal. And you had found the value of angle ADC. How much it was? 80 degrees? Uh, 80 degrees. Right. This angle was 80 degrees. Now, you know very well that AD and DC are equal. So, these two angles must be equal. Make it a... Isn't it, children? It makes a point. Angle... <coughs> sorry. Side AD and side DC are equal. Therefore the angles opposite to those two equal sides will also be equal. So imagine children, this angle is Y. So this angle will also be Y. So if I do 80 plus Y plus Y, you, you will get 180 degrees. So 80, <coughs> 80 plus 2Y will be equal to 180. 2Y is equal to how much? 2Y is equal to 180 minus 80. So 2y is equal to 100 degrees. Therefore, y is equal to 100 by 2. That is equal to 50 degrees. Makes sense? Hmm? So I B is 90 degrees, sir. Uh, what? Then? So I B C might be 90 degrees. 90 degrees, exactly. And See, just now you found out this angle is equal to how much? 50 degrees. Okay. So they were asking us to find what angle B A C. Now this whole angle B A C. This whole angle. This whole angle B A C. How much will be the whole angle B A C? 90. 40 plus 50. Very good. Which is equal to 90 degrees. That's all. <coughs> but children, once you note down all the <coughs> rough steps which I am doing. Huh? In the fair page, you will write down the <coughs> final presentation of yours, which will be the carbon copy of what you're going to write in the exam. Okay. Here I have, you know, drawn so many figures along with the explanation. But in the exam, all those things are not required. You just need to be very particular about the steps. Only what is needed, you just show. Okay. Let's do one more. This is the next question. In this question, you have to apply the properties of parallel lines. Okay. Children, I would like you to draw the figure. Please draw the figure. Okay, it's an amazing sum and there are chances of this question coming in the exam. AB is equal to AC. So what I'll do is, for your reference, I will draw that particular triangle which contains A, B and A, C. Huh? This is your A, this is your B and this is your C. They are telling you A, B is equal to A, C. That means these two sides are what? Equal. A, B is equal to A, C. So if these two sides are equal, you know these two angles must also be equal. I'm just highlighting it over here. So if this angle is equal to x, then this angle should also be equal to x. Okay. Then, um,
children they have given you this angle is equal to 128 degree so if i ask you technically what is that angle 128 degree i think it is the exterior angle formed at vertex a isn't it huh that is the exterior angle formed at vertex a because this 128 degree is not lying inside the triangle this 128 degree is lying outside the triangle right so that angle baf there is they have given you a point f over here so angle baf happens to be what it happens to be the exterior angle at vertex a nana is it clear aaron is it clear angle baf is an exterior angle at vertex a okay now in that case can't i say that this angle would be 180 degree minus 128 degree how much it would be 52 degrees right 180 minus 128 which is equal to 52 degrees okay so this part is clear now children if this angle is equal to 52 degrees and these two angles are x and x each can't i find the value of x by using angle sum property of a triangle i think i can isn't it we can use the angle sum property of a triangle to get the value of x how we know x plus x plus this 52 the sum of these three angles of this triangle abc should be equal to how much 180 degrees isn't it 180 degrees now what is x plus x it is 2x so 2x plus 52 is equal to 180 degrees now 2x is equal to 180 minus 52 therefore 2x is equal to what is 180 minus 52 children it is uh, 128 degrees hello am i right yes sir 180 minus 52 is 128 so children x is equal to how much 128 divided by 2 which is equal to 64 degrees yes i got this answer 64 degree and this angle is also 64 degree okay now <clears throat> listen to this part huh i'm just finding children whatever i could do i just did okay i never knew whether i have to find angle b or angle c i just found it because you know somewhere i feel uh, it is going to help me out okay i just blindly found it now what they have given they have given bc is equal to cd acha where is bc and cd bc and cd belongs to which triangle i think over here bc and cd isn't it yeah so bcd is the triangle to which side bc and cd belongs to okay bcd is the triangle to which side bc and cd belong to okay where bc and cd are equal so then just now i found what i told you know somewhere it is going to help me but just now i found what is angle b how much it was 64 degrees now you know if angle b is equal to 64 degree then angle d will also be 64 degree animesh is this part clear yes why sir. because uh, why because bc and cd are equal sides and according to the property of isosceles triangle the angles opposite to the equal sides are also equal so yes angle b is 64 then angle d is also 64 can, can you find out how much would be angle c just by using angle sum property of triangles let me assume this angle to be y so according to angle sum property 64 plus 64 plus y should be giving you 180 degrees how much is 64 plus 64 it is 128 plus y which is equal to 180 degrees so y will be equal to 180 minus 128 which is equal 52 to 52 degrees 52 degrees very good so this angle is equal to 52 degrees let me label it here in the original diagram 52 degrees i hope you all are drawing these diagrams children nana joshua terence huh 
all the extra figures which I draw, it should be there in your notebook also. It will help you not now, but during revisions. Okay. Fine, children. So this angle is 52. Now, what was the question? The question was to find what is angle CDE. Let us have a look. Where is angle CDE? Children, here is your angle CDE. Where? Here. See this? Here is your Alternate angle. Alternate angle property. Exactly. I told you, know, children, uh, any one of the properties of parallel lines will help you to solve the sum. Now here, which property is helping you? As Anima said, the alternate interior angle property because you know, see this, BC is here, hmm? then DE is here. DE is here. And what is this DC, children? What is this DC? DC is the transversal, right? Now, when you know DE and DC are parallel to each other, Children, it was already given to us, okay? DE and DC are parallel to each other. Can't I say the alternate interior angles between these two parallel lines will also be equal? Yes, I can say that. So children, if this angle is equal to 52 degrees, then this angle will also be equal to 52 degrees. So please do write it down. This implies angle CDE is equal to 52 degrees. And what is the reason? Alternate interior angles. Okay. Alternate interior angles. That's it. So the first question is solved. Let's do the second part. Angle DCE. <clears throat> Where is angle DCE? Over here. Okay, so this angle is how much? 52. Now they are asking us to find what is BCE. Okay, very easy, children. I told you know this is going to help me a lot. Huh? Blank, like you know, blindly I had found those two angles, but now that only helped us to solve this entire sum. Children, uh, I will draw that portion over here. First, I will draw, I'll take this original figure, I'll copy paste it, and then I will show it. Children, how much is this whole angle? How much is this whole angle? 64. It is 64. Very good, because we had already found the whole angle C is 64. Then what we found, children, that this angle, uh, this angle is equal to 52, right? So can you tell me how much would be this angle, which is angle D, C, E? How much it would be? 12 degrees. Why? Because the whole angle, children, the whole angle D, C, B is equal to 64, isn't it? Out of which a small portion, no, a major portion, sorry, major portion is taken away by whom? 52 degrees. So if I ask you how much would be the balance portion, it should be 64 degree minus 52 degrees. And that is equal to 12 degrees. So you just need to mention here 64 minus 52. And that is equal to how much? 12 degrees over. Okay. 64 minus 52, which is equal to 12 degrees. No need to write any reason, children. Okay. No need to write any reason because we have already wrote the necessary reasons before. Okay. Shall we do one more sum, children? We have some more time. Hmm? Uh, before that, Dane, Anime, Sharon, Nana, Joshua, Terence, Advait, clear for all? Yes. 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 But I want you all to write down the correct steps with the reasons in your notebook. Okay. Now, if I go to do that also, then I'll be able to do only one sum in one class. Okay. Fine. Children. Let's do one more. This one. <clears throat> I'm not going very fast, no children. Please tell me. Huh, my rate of speech, huh? the rate at which I'm solving sums, all are decent enough, no? People are able to follow it, right? Nana, Sir, parents. we are solving this from which book? Selena. Okay. Yeah. Uh, children, they haven't given any name to this triangle, so I am naming it as what? Triangle A, B, C, D. Okay. 
Now they have given you mm, this angle. Let's think how to solve this sum. They have given you this angle B is equal to 37. Then uh, BD and DC are equal, okay. <clears throat> this is the angle which you have to find. Okay, this is the angle which you have to find. All right, so how to do that? <clears throat> Uh, children, uh, can you just check in your textbook how many lines are here? Is it double line or single line? Uh, it's a double line. Double line is double. there? Yes, sir. So, double line. It's a double line, no? Okay, oh, fine. Oh, BD double line, like this? Like this, Aaron? Yes, sir. And AC is single line. BC. AC, AC. Acha AC, oh, here also there is a line. Okay, fine. AC is a single line. All right. Oh, double line and then double single lines. Okay, fine. Now, children, what they're trying to say, <clears throat> the triangle ABD is an isosceles triangle, isn't it? What they are trying to say, that triangle ABD is an isosceles triangle. As simple as that. Children. See this? I'm going to draw that triangle over here. Triangle ADB. Okay. Triangle A, D, B. B, D and A, D are equal. So it is an isosceles triangle where angle B is equal to 37. So children, how much will be angle A? The angles opposite to equal sides are equal. So this angle is also 37. I will write here. This angle is also 37 degree. Angle B, A, D is 37 degree. And what reason you will mention? Isosceles triangle. No need to mention every now and then. Angles opposite to equal sides are equal. No, children, please don't waste your time. Simply mention isosceles triangle property. It's more than enough. Any teacher will give you marks. Okay. Now, children, if these two angles are 90 degree each, sorry, if these two angles are 37, 37 each, how much would be the exterior angle at this point? 74. 74. You all have the same answer, Dane? How much will yes, be? Sir. Same answer. Yeah. Why? Because children, in the beginning of the session, I taught you exterior angle property. And what is exterior angle property? The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. Isn't it? So here in this case, angle ADC becomes the exterior angle at vortex B. That would be equal to what? The sum of the two opposite interior angles. So I can easily say this is equal to 74 degrees. Okay. Now what I'll do is I will draw this triangle separately here. Triangle ADC. Okay. I'll draw this triangle ADC separately here. Now I know very well DC and DC are equal because it was already given to me in the question. Just now I found the value of angle D, which is 74. So children, quite natural. If this angle is equal to 74, this angle will also be equal to what? 74. Why? Because these two sides are equal and the angles opposite to equal sides are always equal. Hmm? Now, shall we find the value for X? Let's do it, children. We know X plus 74 plus 74 will be equal to 180 degrees. So X plus 74 plus 74 is 148 degrees. That is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, X is equal to how much? It would be 180 minus 148. And that is equal to 32. how much? 32, 32 degrees. Okay, 32 degrees. Over children. Without a break, we did these sums for today. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, children, enough for the day. I don't want you to get bored. So, we are going to meet on Thursday also. So, Thursday, we will be able to do more number of sums because I don't have to teach much more concepts. So, uh, Friday also, right? Yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All the three days, we'll be having revision class. So, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thursday, we online students will be having. 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the entire crowd will be there for revisions. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So on uh, Monday, yeah. I have exam, sir. Uh, Monday? I have max exam, sir. Uh, then we can do revisions together. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right, children. So thank you so much for joining. God bless you all. Take care. Uh, See you on Thursday. Sure. Ah, yes, animation. What about me? Because my exams are Jan last.